the journey to establish the world's largest free trade area began here in Kigali six years ago, as has already been said. One year later, in Niame, the operational phase of FCFTA was launched. Your Excellency Mohamed Isuf, I wish to once again commend you for leading us to this point and for your contributions as a champion. These two historic moments demonstrate our commitment to the economic unity and prosperity of Africa. Indeed, Africa is capable of coming together to solve our own problems. But of course, I want to urge our leaders also to make sure that some of the things that stand in our way that are actually not too difficult to address should not continue to be the case. We need to fix our politics, our governance, and it all begins with mindset and clarity of vision. Like when people talk about AFCFTA and intra-African trade, how low it is, and so on and so forth, the first thing that comes to mind is lack of free movement. Why should there be anything like that? Why should there, shouldn't there be free movement of people, goods and services? Why? Why shouldn't people of one country freely move to, across the border to another country across the whole continent? What is the issue? In the end, we agree we are brothers and sisters and same people that have same needs. But in the end, the lack of this freedom of people to move freely, well, I, 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 I'm talking about moving freely across borders. Some people don't move freely within their own borders. And it really is all about politics that can be fixed, and we must fix it. We now live in a complex and ever-changing world. But there are a lot of opportunities for us to take advantage of. As a continent, how well we adapt will depend on how strongly connected we are and on the value we add to our collective wealth. The good news is that integration in Africa is ongoing and already we can see positive results. But we can do more and we can do fast, go faster. Over 30 countries are now participating in the Guided Trade Initiative. Rwanda happy, is happy to be among the first countries to join. 
to join this pilot. Governments need to continue doing their part to create an enabling environment for business. Removing non-tariff barriers should remain a priority, as well as facilitating cross-border movement. Reducing freight, logistics, and logistic costs would also be a game changer. Africa has some of the highest in the world. The costs of freight and logistics, that is. Rwanda, our national carrier, is providing an affordable service to the private sector to expand their reach on the continent. I want to thank the Ethiopian Airlines. I'm told the CEO is here among us as an honored guest because of what they are doing to connect Africa and beyond. And we need to join them because even with so much work they are doing, still Africa is begging to be connected. The focus should be on supporting small and medium enterprises. The reason is simple. These businesses and the women and young people that own them are the backbone of Africa's economy. But they shouldn't remain small and medium. They need to grow. <laughs> Building a single continent market does not happen overnight. A lot of progress has been made, but the road is still long. Even in the face of challenges, we need to be consistent and think outside of the box. That is the formula for success. Working together, there is nothing we cannot achieve. 